If you're like most golfers, you slice your driver and you've probably been told a hundred different things on how to fix it. But if you don't really know what part of your golf swing is causing you to slice it, how are you gonna fix the problem? Well, we're gonna dive into that today. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and be sure to leave a comment. I love hearing from you. And give me some input. What do you like about the video? What do you don't like about the video? Or what are some tips or some suggestions that maybe have worked well for you that are helping you fix the slice when it comes to your driver? Because you also could help our fellow golfers. So let's dive right into it. And we're gonna talk about four different segments here today. We're gonna talk about the setup, the most common mistakes that amateur golfers make in the setup that are causing them to slice. We're gonna talk about the takeaway, once again, the common mistakes that golfers make. We're gonna talk about the top of the backswing and also the dicey one, the transition. That's the magic move, that's the most challenging one, but I've got some good drills I think that are gonna help you with that. So first of all, what is it in the setup that you might be doing that is causing you to slice your driver? Well, let's dive into them. Number one, is your stance can be open. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, if I'm sitting here and I'm hitting something down the target, generally speaking, a square stance, which would be where my feet on a line that's parallel to my target line, that would be what we call a square stance. A lot of amateur golfers who are slicing their driver have an open stance. Now, generally speaking, they get their stance open because they're slicing the golf ball, right? So I slice the golf ball and they're like, hey, that's not gonna work. So what do they start to do? They start aiming to the left if they're a right-handed golfer. And what happens is by moving their aim to the left, it actually promotes more of the slicing motion. So that's thing number one you wanna look for. If you're slicing, you could be in your setup, make sure you get your feet actually squared up. And I'm gonna give you a little tip here, kind of a process to go through to make sure your setup is correct. So that would be number one in the setup could be open stance. Number two would be that their weight or the pressure on their feet is too far on their trail foot. So what I mean by that is when they're set in here, if you have your weight too far on your trail foot, believe it or not, this can also cause you to slice the golf ball. The third one is the position of the trail arm. When you're set in there, if your trail arm, which for me is my right arm, gets too high, this is a setup characteristic that can definitely cause me to slice the golf ball. So let's go through those and let's talk about the checkpoints in a process that we can do to help us fix that. So number one is maybe you're aimed open, left of the target if you're a right-handed golfer. Number two, you got your weight on your trail foot to start. And number three, your trail arm is too high. So what's the process I want you to go through in order to get you set up to draw the golf ball? Well, here's what you're gonna do. Put your feet together, take your lead foot, bring it forward and a little bit out towards the target line, and take your trail foot and kick it back a little bit because I want your stance to be slightly closed. Number two, bump your left hip over your left foot a little bit. Notice how I've moved my hips over my lead foot. And as you can guess, number three, is gonna take your lead arm, you're gonna raise it just slightly so your trail arm can fall underneath. So those would be the most common mistakes that I see in terms of the setup. What about if your setup is good, but you're still slicing? Let's talk about the takeaway. And this is probably, I would say, out of all the ones that we're talking about, and I'd be curious to hear what you think. Leave a comment if you think this is something that applies to you but happens in the takeaway. I see a lot of golfers who get set up correctly, but their first move away from the ball, man, it sets them up to slice. So what does that look like? Well, from down the line here, let's assume we got a pretty good setup. When they take the club back, the handle rises or goes up, and the club head goes in and around. So it looks something like this. This is exaggerated, but handle rises, club rotates in and around. Now the club face is open, the handle is high, and this is just a position that is really setting us up to slice the golf ball. So that would be the takeaway common mistake that I see most amateur golfers make in terms of slicing their driver. What's the fix, right? That's what you're asking yourself. All right, Todd, hey, that's great, but how do I fix it? Well, here's the fix. The phrase is hands in, club head out. Hands in, club head out. Let's go through it. We're set in there. When I take the club away, the hands stay in towards the thigh, the club head stays out, okay? Hands stay in towards the thigh, club head stays out. What would be the opposite? Well, you already saw it. Hands rise and go away, club goes in. 
So the fix is hands in, club head out. So those are, that's the most common mistake that I see in terms of the takeaway. All right, so let's assume we've got a good setup. Takeaway's pretty solid, but we're still slicing. How about the top of the backswing? Well, this is another spot where you can make a mistake that can cause you to slice the golf ball. Now, the most common one that I see is when people try to make their swing too long. And when they make their swing too long, they drop the club and they get their wrist into what we call an extension position. Now, I've done some videos on that, on the, the wrist movement. If you, if you haven't seen those, you need to check those out because there's some real gems in there. So let's, today I don't want to dive too deep into it because we've covered that, but I want to show you what I mean by that. So let's say we got those things, we're good set up, we got a good takeaway, but when we get to the top, in an effort to get the swing longer, let me do it from this angle, in, in an effort to get the swing longer, we actually drop the club, okay? We drop it because we want more length. Now what happens is, is that when we drop the club, the lead wrist rotates this way, which we call extension. It's a little bit beyond our topic here today, and that gets the club face open. So in an effort to make their swing longer, they actually drop the club. And what happens is the club face gets open. So the fix is pretty simple. When you get the club to the top, feel like the swing is short, and feel like the logo here on my glove points up towards the sky. Let me do it from this angle here. So I take it to the top, my swing feels short, and the logo, the titleist right here, is pointing towards the sky. It's not pointing towards there. Now most of the time, this is, can simply be fixed by simply keeping the swing shorter and the sensation of the logo being pointed up towards the sky. So those are the three first areas. We talked about setup, we talked a little bit about takeaway, we talked about the top of the swing. Now, if you've got all those things in the place and you're still slicing your driver, all right, this is where I see a lot of it with really high level players. It's in your transition, okay? Now, the transition is the place where the club comes to transition from backswing to forward swing. So if you're slicing your driver and you've got all those other things you feel like are in pretty good check, this is where you want to look. Now, in that transition, if we pull on the handle, so from this angle right here, so I got it back, and if I make a lot of effort and I pull straight down on this handle this way, Notice this movement, okay? What that does is that opens up the club face, okay? Now that's usually a movement that I see a lot with really high level players who are looking for a lot of speed. They're here and they just pull straight down on it and what that ha what do does is it opens up the club face, okay? And can cause you to slice your driver. So what's the fix? All right, well, the fix is to actually let the club head work a little bit out and away from you, okay, and let the club head lower versus this way. So from this angle here, I can take it to the top, I got the logo towards the sky, and I feel like the club lowers a little bit. So if we're slicing the golf ball, if we, when we're hitting our driver, it could be many things. It could be in the setup, it could be the takeaway, it could be the top of the backswing, or it could be in the transition. Now, my advice to you is next time you head to the golf course and you start working this, start from the beginning. Start with the setup. Nine times out of 10, nine times out of 10, it's in your setup or it's in your takeaway. It's not at the top, it's not in the transition. Very, very seldom do I see somebody get the club in this beautiful position at the top and still slice the golf ball. Spend your time, spend your energy on your setup, Okay, spend your time and your energy on your takeaway, and if you do that, I think you're gonna find your answer. So hopefully these tips help you understand the most common errors, but more importantly, how to find them and how to fix them so once and for all, you can start hitting your driver nice and straight and eliminate that slice.